In this lesson, I want to talk about special sets of addresses. There are special host addresses. A host address cannot be all zeros or all ones, i.e. the host portion of an IP address. If I have a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, so the host address is the last eight bits, they cannot be all zeros or all ones, which means I cannot have an IP address of 192.168.1.0 or 192.168.1.255. The all zeros represents the network itself, i.e. 192.168.1.0 is network 192.168.1. All ones is the broadcast address. If I send a message to 192.168.1.255, it actually sends it to every host in that 192.168.1 network. There's also 127.0.0.1. This is the loopback address, i.e. the local host. If I was to ping 127.0.0.1, I'm pinging myself. No matter what my IP address is, this is just going back and talking to my own networking stack. I also previously mentioned private IP address ranges. These are IP addresses that are governed by the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, IANA, and these are not routable on the public internet. They are reserved for internal use, and I say company here, but in your house, if you go and run ipconfig to look at your local IP configuration, you probably have a 10. something or 172.16 something or more likely 192168, because there are three ranges reserved for those uses. I can use 10. slash 8, so anything from 10.0.0.0 through 10.255.255.255, .255 .255, i.e. a massive number of possible IP addresses. How many IP addresses? We can always open up the calculator. If I was to do 2 to the power of, in this case, 24, because only the first 8 bits are the network, the last 24 are for the host addresses, I could have 16 million, nearly 17 million machines on that network. So if I was a really large company, I had multiple locations throughout the world, lots of employees, I would probably use the 10 dot because I don't want to have to have different networks in the future. This is going to future proof me. And the reality is even if I was a very small company, I still could use 10 dot. There's no harm in it. I just use the portion of the address space I want. Remember, you're going to break this up into smaller subnets. Maybe I only use 10.0.1.0 and 10.0.2.0. I only have a few hundred machines. That's fine. You want to pick the one larger than the foreseeable use case. I don't want to run out in the future. I could also use 172.16, and that's through to 172.31. So this is a group of 16 contiguous Class B networks. That obviously gives me a smaller number of possible IP addresses. I could also use 192.168 through 192.168.255.255. So this is a contiguous group of 256 Class C networks. So depending on the size you actually have, how many machines, this is the overarching, the total IP space available to my company. And then I would then break that down into subnets based on machines that directly communicate, maybe a floor of my building. Maybe it's a certain lab environment. That's kind of the common way I would actually utilize this. Now with all of these, there is unicast and multicast. When a source sends the packet directly to a single target, the transmission is unicast. Uni1, there's one target. When a source sends packet to multiple targets, the transmission is multicast. Commonly, multicast will be utilized for media streaming. I'm sending out a video. I don't want to send the packet over the wire to every single machine that's watching this broadcast. So I send the packet out once, and lots of machines can read that packet. When I think about operating system deployment, if I'm deploying 100 machines, I can send the packets out once over the network, and 100 machines can be taking those packets and deploying the operating system. 